In the world of bizarre bacteria, and bacteria that are just a little bit too extreme, there's actually one that's always stood out. The one you see right here, Dinococcus radiodurans. A bacterium that wasn't particularly popular until 1999, when it was suddenly listed as a record holder for a lot of different achievements. With the biggest one being radiation. It's actually called radiodurans because it's able to withstand an incredible amount of radiation. Thousands of times more than any cell in our bodies, and even several times more than a typical tardigrade. And so as a result, back then, it was actually nicknamed Conan the Bacterium. Obviously, a kind of a play on words in regards to Conan the Barbarian. But something really unique was discovered about this bacterium extremely recently, and turns out it's actually something we can possibly borrow from it and maybe even give it to ourselves. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton. In this video, we're going to discuss a discovery and an extraction of a very specific protein that, in theory, could one day lead to extreme advances in medicine and maybe even make ourselves just a little bit stronger. But I guess first is somewhat intriguing history of how this was discovered and why this bacterium is actually so interesting. And in essence, it all started back in the 1950s when a study by Arthur Anderson from an agricultural institute in Oregon decided to find out if it could actually sterilize various canned meats by using gamma ray radiation. And specifically, he wanted to find out how much radiation would be needed to essentially make canned meat pretty much sterile and thus last indefinitely. And so here he exposed various types of meat to relatively high radiation doses that back then was believed to be able to kill anything. But in every single case, his meat spoiled. And it actually took a few months to figure out why. He was able to isolate one bacterium that survived in every single case. Spoiler alert, it was this guy. And over the years we realized that they actually seem to be present everywhere. And as a matter of fact, there's probably some in your body right now. But luckily for us, they're not pathogenic, they're not dangerous, and they don't really care about anything except for maybe getting some nutrients here and there. But it was really in the late 90s, and specifically in mid-2000s, that this bacterium exploded in popularity. Mostly because it was discovered that it's able to survive in so many different environments. It was one of the most extreme extremophiles. It could survive high radiation, but also extreme acid, complete desiccation and dehydration, and extreme cold. And so it basically became known as a kind of a poly-extremophile. But back in 2020, it really sort of reached the peak, and mostly because of the studies from the International Space Station. This bacterium was exposed to outer space for approximately three years. And in August of 2020, scientists discovered that it didn't just survive outer space, it was totally fine. Now obviously it was not functioning while in space, but when returned to Earth conditions, it was not affected by pretty much anything at all. So here it survived vacuum, very cold conditions, and of course radiation in space. Because of this, a lot of discussions around this time started to be in regards to panspermia. What's the chance that such an organism could have actually come from outer space? And moreover, what's the chance that life right now is spreading across the entire galaxy by using various asteroids? We've actually discussed some of these concepts in some of the videos in the description, but as of today, there's obviously still a lot of disagreement. But there's definitely no disagreement in regards to how extreme this organism actually is. For some reason, it's able to survive pretty much anything you throw at it. And here, this is actually where there's a bit of a problem. As in, there's a problem explaining why. Why is it able to survive such extreme radiation, and how would something like this even evolve? Now, obviously, if this organism was developed in extremely highly radioactive conditions, such as, for example, somewhere in Chernobyl, or even inside a nuclear reactor, obviously then it would make sense. But, evolutionary speaking, there is really no place on Earth that would provide high enough radiation for this organism to acquire these unusual properties. And so as a result, there have been actually some unusual propositions that, well, maybe it actually is not from Earth, and maybe it actually came from outer space, or even from planets like Mars. There, radiation is generally higher, and because it could have been transferred through some kind of a meteorite, there have been a few papers exploring this idea. But here, there's also a problem. And the problem is that its DNA and its RNA are extremely similar to pretty much everything we have on Earth. As a matter of fact, its DNA is no different from a typical bacterium. And so instead, a few years back, researchers were able to explain all of this by using a slightly different reasoning. Here they realized that maybe this is actually 
an accidental adaptation based on something entirely different. Maybe it's actually adapted to desiccation or dry conditions that very often causes similar damage to, for example, DNA, like what we usually expect from very high radiation. And turns out that maybe this is actually correct after all. Several experiments have been conducted by exposing these organisms to desiccation and then radiation, and very similar effects were observed in both cases. And so in reality, this somewhat common but somewhat bizarre bacterium that we can usually find in a lot of habitats rich in organic materials, such as for example typical garbage, possibly evolved an extreme way to survive super dry conditions. And it's really these repair mechanisms that a lot of scientists have always tried to understand, because they actually do seem to be super extreme. For example, unlike other bacteria, here it's able to repair most of its DNA within approximately 24 hours. And previously, it was believed it's able to do so by first having a lot of copies of its own genome, but by also having some kind of an unusual DNA repair mechanism. And I mean really extreme repair mechanism. So just to give an example, when a typical tardigrade is exposed to approximately 4000 gray of radiation, it almost instantly dies. But for Conan the bacterium, even 5000 doesn't really do anything. It can still function, it can still reproduce, it can still live its life. And so in a recent study that you can find in the description, Robert Zabla and his team were finally able to discover one of the major proteins that seems to be responsible for all of this. This protein is now referred to as DDRC, DNA Damage Repair Protein C. And it's the first time ever something like this has been discovered anywhere. Because it's literally a kind of a single function DNA repair factory that does everything completely by itself. So for example, when it comes to our cells, human cells, normally if inside our genome, out of a billion base pairs, there are more than two breaks, this genome is considered to be damaged and it usually causes the destruction of the cell. So basically just two tiny breaks are seen as completely unrepairable. But for Conan the bacterium, because of this protein, even hundreds of different breaks seem to be totally fine with the protein being able to repair everything in under 24 hours. And turns out it does so in a very specific but somewhat unusual way. It scans for breaks along the DNA at all times, and when any kind of a break is detected, it literally just grabs the DNA, wraps around it, and neutralizes additional damage. But that's just the first step here. The second step involves a kind of a communication system that then tells the machinery inside the cell that this DNA now needs to be repaired. With the proteins being able to form very complicated networks, able to carry out all of this individually and without the use of anything else. And because this is such an unusual protein, the researchers in the study were able to then isolate it and, just to see what happens, placed it in other bacteria. Here they chose your typical E. coli. And just like that, completely unexpectedly, E. coli also became approximately 40 times more resistant to damage from ultraviolet radiation, implying that this particular protein, in some sense, can actually work in a lot of different cells because it seems to have a very unique ability to function independently and to fix everything almost completely by itself, making this an extreme example of a kind of a standalone repair machine, which is most likely going to lead to additional studies. So for example, by adding this to maybe some kind of a plant, it may become possible to make this plant resistant to desiccation and dehydration, which is of course why this protein most likely exists to begin with. Or what about humans? Is it possible that one day this could actually lead to some incredible advances in treating various cancers, basically neutralizing damage in mere hours by using a completely natural process? But obviously, we don't really know where this goes just yet. But what we do know is that this is just one of hundreds of different proteins in this bacterium that serve the same purpose, making this bacterium extremely resilient and practically immune to mutation or to damage. Which of course suggests that in the next decade, even more exciting discoveries are going to be made in this bacterium and may lead to advances in medicine, advances in agriculture, or even help us deal with some extreme environments such as nuclear pollution where these bacteria can possibly easily clean up anything, which by the way has already been kind of done in a lab environment. And so once more discoveries are made about Conan the bacterium or another incredible protein is discovered somewhere out there, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.